Hey love, what's up? Welcome to Confidently Uncomfortable. I'm your host, Jago, health and lifestyle coach and not so regal confidence queen. Coming at you with the real, the raw, and of course, the uncomfortable. My mission is to show you that to be confident, it has absolutely nothing to do with being perfect or having it all together and everything to do with you getting uncomfortable and pushing your limits. Thanks for joining me. Let's dive in. Welcome back. If you are on your self-love journey, which it doesn't really end, so you're probably still on it, you may have noticed that sometimes you hit a wall and you're the obstacle that's getting in the way. And it has to do with self-sabotage that's coming up when it comes to your self-love journey, self-acceptance, reaching your goals, just any of those things. Self-sabotage can get in the way. So we are going to talk about self-sabotage and how it relates to our self-love language. Um, If you have not taken the self-love language quiz that I have, it's a free quiz. It's going to tell you what your self-love language is, and it's going to bring even more clarity to this episode. So if you want to take that real quick, you absolutely can, or you can take it after and then just take what you learned from today's episode and apply it to your self-love language. So you should already know the five self, the five love languages. I shift it into your self love language and the importance of that because ultimately it starts with you. I want to kind of hit on what can come up. So maybe you just finished doing the five day go love yourself challenge with me. I'm so happy if you did. Um, if you haven't, you can join it after taking the quiz. Um, but it's a free challenge and we talked about every single one of the love languages. I hope you feel more connected to yourself, more connected to your partner, and are just really excited to go deeper in your self-love journey. But I also want to be realistic. Even though we can find a level of clarity and understanding and you get to know yourself better, maybe you know exactly what you need to show yourself love or you know exactly what you need to feel love, but we keep getting in a way. Something keeps getting coming up for us and we almost self-sabotage in relationships or when we're working towards a goal, if you're trying to accomplish something, if you're trying to, maybe it's a fitness goal and you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to, you know, be more consistent with taking care of yourself or, or um, you know, eating and having a better relationship with food and having a better relationship with your body, but we start to tear ourselves down and pick ourselves apart. I want to tell you right now, you're not alone. That was me for so long and it still comes up in different ways. I will tell you, I will be the first to be super honest with you that like as you continue to grow and level up, those previous saboteurs (laughs) can come up in a new way as you level up. So the good thing is if you can be more aware of them and recognize what most likely will come up for you, um, it helps as you can continue to grow and something else comes up in a new way. For example, like I no longer have you know, the same level of uh, body dysmorphia that I used to have. But so like self-doubt and comparison doesn't really come up when it comes to bodies because I've fully accepted my body as it is. However, you know, leveling up in my business, comparison can still come up with other business owners, other coaches. And the dysmorphia could just be like where what I think about myself and I'm not really accepting the accomplishments and I'm really focused on the quote unquote flaws or like how far I am from my goal. And so you see that that could very much be compared to our health and fitness goals. And so these things will come up. And so I want to, and what I do with my clients is like create these tools and understanding now at the level that you're at so that you can continue to use them as you continue to grow. So I will never act like you're just like, check, I'm done. I'm no longer need to worry about my self-care, my self-love. I'm confident. I'm done. As you continue to grow and develop, the universe, God will test you and be like, all right, <laughs> like how, how bad do you want this? And then we will often, sometimes we will get in our own way because there's this fear of success. We don't know what it looks like on the other end of body acceptance, on the other end of getting that job and that career. And so sometimes that fear of the unknown creates an obstacle to get in our way, to deter us from success, to deter us from really, really fully accepting who we are. And so something that I find really interesting is your self-love language often is what we do. We do the opposite to sabotage ourselves. So what I mean by that is basically you will take the way that you receive love best 
you will take it and do the opposite and almost punish yourself in such a deep way that like it'll hurt you more than ever because you prioritize, you really value that level of love. Like you really value words of affirmation. And so since you do, your self-sabotage behavior is to do the opposite, is to speak negatively towards yourself and just have really negative thoughts, negative self-talk. Your inner mean girl is super mean and says the worst things when it's in your head. And anytime you do something, it'll start to come up and be like, who do you think you are? You're not worthy of this. Or why do you think that this is going to work? Nothing else ever worked or whatever comes into your head. And that hits us deeper because we resonate so much with those words of affirmation. We resonate so much with that if that's your top one. And also remember that these different love languages, you're allowed to have more than one. It's good to know your top one because it might be the one that you self-sabotage with the most, but it might come up in different areas. So I'm going to hit every single one. So that's words of affirmation. The opposite in self-sabotage behavior is often negative self-talk. That's me. My top one's words of affirmation. I was really, really big into negative self-talk and it can turn into a spiral where you're just completely bringing yourself down. Something to help um, combat that behavior is catching yourself when it comes up. So when you start to speak negatively towards yourself, stop the words in its tracks. Don't let yourself even finish the thought, the sentence, literally just skirt, stop your words, okay? Um, shifting towards positive self-talk, like what are some things that I really do love about myself, having those handy and ready to go. Um, So I have like a wins wall where like all of my wins from my career, things that in my life that have happened, just things I really love, I will write them down on this wall and continue to add to them. I highly recommend you have a wins wall. I had a good coach that helped recommend me do that and it's just it's been so nice because anytime you're feeling down or you're bringing yourself down you can look at this wall and be like wait I'm actually pretty pretty freaking cool next one is the acts of service so if acts of service was your top um which that's my husband's top Uh, When we're feeling stressed or when we're trying to almost punish ourselves, we'll do the opposite and we might have a messy home or environment or undone chores or tasks. So you might notice um, you're not doing those things and taking care of yourself. A big one for acts of service, maybe you really enjoy, you know, meal prepping and it feels really good to you and it's like showing your future self-love. And then when you're getting into that self-sabotage mode, you start to not plan things ahead. You aren't delegating tasks. You're taking on too much. You're letting your environment kind of take over and get crazy. And that can be really easy. And I don't, I, I'm acts of service isn't my top, but I will say that like as someone who suffers from anxiety and depression, when I am feeling that, I absolutely will shift and like my environment will change. I'm not doing my chores regularly. I'm out of my routine. I'm, you know, my environment doesn't look great. And so take a second to just look around you and identify, is that kind of what's coming up for me right now? Is my environment a little bit messy and crazy? And then what's something I can do right now to get started? So to combat this, I don't want you to combat it with guilt, okay? You don't need to feel guilty for a messy home. You don't need to feel comparative to all the Pinterest perfect homes you see online. Um, You don't need to put yourself down for all the things that you haven't done yet. I know a lot of people do that when it comes to tasks and chores is they just think, oh, I didn't do anything yesterday. I'm so lazy. Like we're calling ourselves lazy. We're being mean to ourselves and we're just allowing things to build up instead of just continuing to let that snowball into more and more clutter and mess and just it seems into maybe other areas of your life, start small. Just set a timer for 15 minutes and just clean one corner. Put on some music that motivates you. Um, Knowing that you only have to do it for 15 minutes can really help you not feel overwhelmed. Only focusing on one corner of an area can be a really good place to start too because then you're not thinking of how much more you have to clean or do. And then usually after the 15 minutes, you feel good and maybe because your energy is really low and you're in a really low place, that's all we can do for today. And I, instead of feeling bad about what you didn't do, I want you to celebrate those 15 minutes that you did do because tomorrow you can do another 15 or maybe later on in the day. Okay. So starting small is something that can really help combat that. And then also giving yourself grace and saying, you know what, 
my environment's really messy, but maybe I need to ask for some help. Maybe I need to delegate because acts of service is your love language. Maybe you need to delegate some of this and not take it all on. Maybe you need to ask your kids, hey, I want you to start doing these chores. We're going to help do this. Maybe you need to ask your partner and be like, hey, I know that you're working more or I know that, you know, we've both been busy, but can we tackle these chores together? Can we um, clean up the space together. And that can be really helpful. Maybe you need just some accountability. So you're single, you got your own space, but it is pretty messy. So even though you're the only one that sees it, you feel that. So maybe communicate to a partner or a friend and just be like, hey, um, I'm totally going to get my stuff cleaned. So I'm telling you that now. Take a before and after pick. That always makes me happy. I do that. And I actually did that um, a couple weeks ago. You guys are listening to this at the end of February. So um, a month ago, basically, I knew I wanted to get it done. I didn't have a ton of time. So I voiced it on on my stories and was like, hey, this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to clean up this space. And then I actually recorded myself on time lapse doing it. I didn't even post that, but it like helped me knowing that like I was doing that and I got to see myself complete the task. Um, Might feel a little bit weird, but it really helped me remind that like I can do that. Even if I'm not a quote unquote like clean, organized person, that doesn't mean that I have to live in craziness, right? You get to choose kind of the next steps that you take, but that's really something I would recommend with acts of service. And then asking for help is a big one for that, that group of people too. If physical touch, oh, this is a big one. So listen up. If physical touch was one of your top, maybe it was your top one for your, your love language, typically that reaction will be punishment by avoiding human interaction, right? So completely avoiding other people, kind of putting yourself away from everyone, like not really interacting with people, um, definitely not reacting like with people physically, maybe not connecting with yourself physically, um, just feeling very disconnected. And a lot of times when there's a disconnect with that, what comes up in the physical touch is we're feeling very disconnected from our bodies and from ourselves and from others. And so we might be over consuming other things. So physical touch, maybe we've been over consuming a lot of content on social media and we're not feeling worthy of connecting with other people. We're feeling like less than like, oh, I'm not cool or I don't have those types of friends or I don't go on those vacations or whatever. And so if you're recognizing with that one that you're just over consuming and comparing and then it's making you really avoid any kind of human interaction, I want you to take a step away from that. And I'm going to break these down even more. So We'll kind of do like a recap at the end with all of these and even some of my like favorite tips of what I help my clients do and what I do with myself. Um, Receiving gifts, if this is your top one, um, a lot of times this sabotage that will come out here is like not allowing yourself to treat yourself, not feeling worthy of nice things. So if you really enjoy receiving gifts um, and you like the thoughtfulness, basically the reaction can be not thinking of yourself, just really putting yourself last. You're not being at the forefront, thinking you don't deserve these things or you didn't earn these things, and then really being mean to yourself. Or maybe you do get something and then you're picking yourself apart for doing it. Like, you shouldn't have done that. Like, who do you think you are? You should feel guilty the whole time you're at this pedicure. (laughs) Like, no, don't. Enjoy yourself. So my recommendation with these is to see if any of these are coming up for you. If you can relate, might be more than one thing. Um, Audit your behaviors and habits. So if you're noticing these coming up for you, it all starts with shifting your mindset. So it really has to do with your mindset. Be more self-aware and then shift your mindset, recognizing like, punishing myself is not helping anything, right? Like feeling guilty, punishing myself, putting myself down for being in this state isn't helping. So what can I do to combat the self-sabotage? So let's break it down again. Coming back to words of affirmation, recognize those words that you say that they are not truths. There's a negative talk. It is a negative narrative that we've either been taught or we've continued to kind of tell ourselves and it's not a truth about us. Typically, if it's something coming up for us, ask yourself, is that really true? Like, do we really feel that way? Or maybe it is something that's true, but it's like, is that really like where all my value comes from? Like, so what? If if I look in the mirror and I'm talking bad about myself, like you're you're fat, you're this, you're that. Sorry, but should that even be a bad thing? Or is that something that I'm told is supposed to be bad, right? So break up with that mindset of negativity and shaming yourself for simply existing, okay? Celebrate yourself more. Um, just be more aware of those words. And like I said, cut them before they even get started. Now, when it comes to 
if acts of service and like you have a messy environment, um, take time to clear the energy in your space. So clean, you know, like I said, the 15 minute trick, get rid of the junk, delegate tasks, um, and somehow keep it up with a daily routine. So even if you delegate some tasks, like maybe you ask for some help from some people, you hire someone to clean your space, that doesn't mean you just hire someone to clean your space and then you never clean again, right? Start creating some daily routines to where you are showing yourself love through acts of service, whether it's like meal prepping every day or cleaning the kitchen every day or, you know, doing something like that that's super small by starting to incorporate that sort of self-care and self-love into your daily routine. It's going to help it be more consistent and not build up and turn into this crazy self-sabotaging behavior, okay? Because you're essentially proving to yourself that you're capable of those things and you're no longer going to be putting yourself down because of this narrative that you've told yourself, like, you don't deserve this or you're not, you're not allowed to do this. You don't have time for this or whatever kind of comes up for you, okay? Oh, this next one's a big one I really, really love. So for the physical touch and quality time, they kind of go together, but basically isolation is like what's coming up, right? So when we are, when if physical touch or quality time were two of your top, um, a lot of times the reaction is self-isolation, right? Avoiding human interaction or completely isolating ourselves from that, from each other. So those kind of go hand in hand or even with isolation, basically just avoiding human interaction. So the truth about this one when it comes to self-sabotage is sometimes we don't even notice it. Like we're like, wow, I didn't realize I haven't left my house in like four days because our world has become very digitized to where like we can get most of the things we need without interacting with everyone, anyone. Like you can order food without talking to anyone. You can do your work without necessarily having a real conversation. Maybe it's just via email with your coworkers. You know, you can really do all of that without that interaction. And so it might happen and we don't realize we're doing it. So like, take a second to ask, like, have I been, you know, isolating? Have I been self-isolating? Am I doing this out of fear? Am I doing this out of like, maybe I had some upsetting things happen to me. Maybe I like feel disconnected from my relationships and I want to create some different ones. And so Something that I really recommend when this comes up for you, I notice this when I am in a state of like depression, I start to isolate myself, right? And so I tell my clients whenever this comes up, even with me, they have this code and it is, I I say to, to create a code with like your BFF or me, your coach. And when this feeling of isolation is starting to come up and you're starting to want to just fully like ghost your friends basically and you're wanting to ghost your like friends family significant other instead of like not telling anyone and completely peacing out literally send the ghost emoji y'all know which one i'm talking about the ghost emoji to like your people so like your bff the people that like you communicate this ahead of time that like support you love you unconditionally totally understand that this happens and you go through this these spouts of these feelings and these emotions and that's okay so communicate that ahead of time that basically whenever i send this ghost emoji to you it means that i'm struggling but i may not even have the energy or words to put into like what i need right now um I will tell you like i have a lot of clients i work with that also have anxiety and depression and like it feels so hard to even ask for help. It feels hard to put into words of like, hey, this is how I'm feeling or I'm feeling this way because because maybe we don't know why it's coming up for us. Maybe we don't know why we're feeling this way. I've done this with my part with uh, Tom, my husband, and it's really helped me because I don't have to necessarily like process everything first and then tell him this is how I'm feeling. I get to basically say, hey, this is how I'm feeling. I'm not really sure why yet, but now you know so that like if I start to act a certain way, self-isolate, not want to be around anyone, you know why. And then they can, you know, react accordingly, support you accordingly, whatever works best for each other. And that's a really helpful one if you do start to notice that. Um, Because my tops, uh, physical touch is another one that's a top for me. And so I will notice I'll isolate or avoid people when that comes up. And so that's a big thing I help my clients do. The last one when it comes to gifts, um, I talked about like, you're not feeling worthy of treating yourself for nice things, or you're feeling guilty, or they're just like, you feel like you're wanting to you're like, "Ah, but my kids need so many other things. And then you just like guilt yourself and like talk yourself out of it. But you know that like receiving that gift makes you feel really good. Um, So a suggestion with this one is to make a list of self-care things that you enjoy doing or purchasing. Kind of make a combination because I get you gifts don't necessarily have to be 
a physical purchase. It can just be like an investment in yourself in some way. And so getting a list of those things can really help you. It could be like your Amazon, like wish list can be on there too, but there's other things that you really enjoy having. And then try to do at least like one of those things a day, like gift yourself that, whatever that one thing is each day. And also when you do buy something for yourself, I want you to celebrate that purchase and celebrate yourself for investing in yourself and for buying nice things and reminding yourself, hey, I'm worthy of nice things. Like I'm worthy of, you know, having a treat yourself day. I'm worthy of still buying nice clothes, even though I want to pay like buy my kids nice clothes, like I can do both, you know, or I can, you know, my kids are going to grow out of the clothes and I'm not necessarily so they can get thrift store clothes and that's okay. I don't have to feel guilty about it. That's how I feel. At least I, I grew up on thrift store clothes and I hold nothing against my mom. I think it was really, really good for me, but celebrating that. So then you're not feeling guilt when it comes to gifts, um, embracing gifts and, and, and being, fully able to receive them is going to start by giving yourself those gifts as well. Um, Start treating yourself to to nice things and recognize that you deserve those things, okay? And you don't have to be worthy of them. You don't have to earn them, but you deserve them, okay? Speaking of investing (laughs) and gift giving and investing time in yourself, I have super exciting news. Like, okay, I've been holding this in. I'm terrible at secrets. I've been holding this in for a really long time, but I am so excited because I'm going to be launching a self-paced course called Busy BCB. And so I'm launching my signature Body Confident Blueprint self-paced course. So for the first time ever, you're going to get access to modules that teach the signature method to finding confidence and creating your best self, but it's completely go at your own pace. And so basically so many of you have wanted to do body confident blueprint wanted to be a part of bcb but it was like not the right time to make that big of an investment or you know they honestly were like i really just feel like i need the the content and I, i'm like want to do it my own i want to kind of go at my own pace um or they're just like I, I don't really know if i need the group support and the one-on-one support so i just i don't want the content i want all the the methods that you use um the mindset shifts everything and for so long, I was trying to figure out how to make it work. And finally, we've done this. So what I'm doing is before I officially launch, I'm looking for women who can beta test the program and give feedback at a massive discount. So the Busy BCB course is going to take you through literally everything you need to know about starting your health and confidence journey. You're going to understand macros, flexible dieting without restriction and jumpstart your fitness goals through a lot of mindset activities as well. This beta launch group is going to get all of that support, everything from the modules, but then they're also going to give me feedback and then they'll get the final program after it gets completed. So we're going to just do like some fun, you know, updates, making sure everything's exactly what it is that you need instead of just throwing a course at you all. um, I've done a lot of research for the past three years on what my clients needed, what were some things that they could have done on their own as a course and things that would support them and help them get the best results possible. So that's what I did to create this course. But even though I already have that all of that research, I'm going to take it one step further, go through the actual program with this beta round. And then after that, getting the final product and releasing it. So I'm very excited for this first group because not only are they going to get it at a massive discount, but they're going to be able to get feedback and support and it's going to be really, really change lives. So I'm excited about it. So I've you know, I've had women lose weight in my programs, I have them prioritize their mental and physical health, creating long term lifestyle change is the biggest thing that I want to help you with. And it's going to be through these holistic t- techniques that I've been doing with my clients. And I've put together from years of experience. So it helps them have better relationships with food, more natural energy and a total mindset shift with confidence in their body. Um, so for this beta launch, I'm doing it basically where uh, it's first come first serve. It opens today two twenty two twenty two, which I'm super excited about. If y'all have not started like manifestation and writing out your goals and speaking them into existence, today's a really good day to do it. And also, if you haven't invested in yourself, your health, prioritizing your needs, this is a really great way to get started with it. Um, once those beta spots are gone, they're going to be gone. So make sure you click on the link in the show notes. If you're watching this after the fact and the the product is out there, it's out there. You can absolutely join. I'll put the link in there as well once we have the final um, program for you. But you're going to learn my nourish method. You're going to gain knowledge 
knowledge on exercise form and cueing, workout routines, meal prep, and how to use macros to gain muscle and lose body fat, or just understanding what your body needs. Um, it's going to be a great way to heal that relationship with food. Um, you're also going to get access to my signature rockstar routine method to create habits and routines that stick. Um, this is definitely a course for a busy woman who struggles to prioritize their needs and needs the blueprint with the flexibility to go at your own pace. This course is perfect for you. It's going to include wellness tools that you can utilize for the rest of your life. So if you want this, click the link in the show notes. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me, but it's definitely going to be worth the, the program is going to be well worth it. I want you to be part of it from the ground up. I've been in this program for over three years, really fine tuning what I wanted to offer to you all. So when it gets released, I just can't wait. Make sure you click the link to join now. And I just am very excited for you to continue on your self-love journey and investing in yourself. If this is the first time you've ever invested in yourself in something like this, that's so focused on you know, a holistic approach to long-term lifestyle change, I want to tell you right now, the more you invest in yourself, the more you can show up for others. It is not selfish. It is one of the best things you can do for you. You can do for your relationships and you can do for your confidence and self-love journey. So I'm looking forward to seeing all of you who join me on this journey. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. All right. I'll see y'all in there. Thanks again for listening to Confidently Uncomfortable. I love being able to connect with you here and honestly, don't want it to end. So head over to my Facebook group, Body Confident Blueprint, and be sure to follow me on Insta at JagoFitLife. Also, if you're ready to get real confidently uncomfortable, go leave this podcast a five-star review and email me the review screenshot, support at JagoFit360.com, for a chance to win a free 30-minute fitness audit and goal-setting session. I appreciate your support. See you next time.